Today we're going to visit with you about rollers and the differences that there are in rollers. As you can see by what's on the table, they're not all rollers are the same. We have three inch rollers, large, large diameter. We have two inch rollers. Typically our larger cutting units will have uh, larger rollers and then the smaller the cutting unit, we go with smaller rollers. You can see we have smooth rollers and we have different kinds of grooved rollers. Typically, we're going to see a smooth roller on the rear of the cutting unit, not on the front. So because the rear roller is going to lay the grass down, it gives us that striping effect that we're looking for. We typically see the smooth roller on the back. If we want the stripe, which is a common mostly we want stripes, we will not put a grooved roller on the back of a cutting unit. The smooth rollers, if you put it on the front, would lay the grass down and that's not going to give us an even height of cut, so rarely will you see smooth rollers on the front. So I've seen it, but I don't think it's appropriate. So we want some kind of grooved roller in the front. The grooved rollers in the front are going to cut through the grass, allow the grass to stay standing up for the most part, and allow us to get a better quality of cut. As you can see here, we have spiral rollers and we have straight rollers. And the straight rollers are more common, as we've been around for a long time. Spiral rollers are a little bit more modern. This particular roller here is a tube with spacers and washers on it. And so the washers are actually free. You can actually turn the washers because they're just sticking, they're sitting on top of the tube that's in the middle. As this runs and operates, it's going to wear. As they wear, the spacers will get worn. The spring that's in the middle is designed to keep tension on it and keep them from moving around. Sometimes it'll get so worn and the spring has no more tension and then the washers start flopping around. So you use, you take it apart and you would add spacers, you would add washers or you replace it. So it depends on what the problem really is but the spring is designed to keep tension on it. You can actually drive the pin out, take the cap off, take it apart, put it back together. If you damage one or more of these, it is possible to just repair that. So that's one style roller. <clears throat> this one here, same way, similar. This one doesn't have a, a, a spring in there to help keep the tension on it. I was looking for some kind of uh, adjuster piece that there's not. This one you can take the roll pin out. If it gets loose you could add a washer in there, tighten it back up with a washer by simply adding a washer. But they don't have... These are like pressure... I don't, they, they don't look like they're pressure washers. I don't believe that they're bevel washers to put tension on them. I think they're just washers. So the difficulty with adding washers in with either one of these styles would be if I put a new washer into a worn roller the washer will be larger and you're going to have some high to cut differences that you're going to be playing with. You'd almost have to put it on a grinder, spin it, bring it back down. So that would be a challenge that you'd have to deal with. So a lot of times when they get that worn, typically you just replace it. So those are options that are out there. <laughs> you notice on this one while you have it up here that the grease fitting is sticking straight down. As we go through these, you're going to see some that have the grease fitting you know, sticking straight out and some where the grease fitting is on the end. The advantage of having it on the end like this is when I go to grease, it's breezy, clip, grease. The problem is as I'm rolling along the ground, we're constantly pushing on this little ball and we push dirt, we push water into that ball, into the grease fitting, and we get a lot of dirt in our system. And if that thing should start to leak for whatever reason, well, either way, it'll go right onto the grain. Either way, it's going to get on the grain. So if it gets uh, squishes out here, it's going to get there. Or if it leaks out here, it's going to get... really good that you clean it. So this one, the grease fitting is on the end. We're not pushing on it all the time. <clears throat> the problem is if we have a bracket here trying to get a grease fitting or grease gun, you got to roll it down, and there's barely enough room that you can get it on there and grease it. It works, but it has to be a pretty thin bracket to get your grease tip around the end of it. And wouldn't it be easier to break too on the side like that? It's possible that if you're rolling along and you hit something here, you could snap it off. It's possible. So, just different kinds. So, this particular... Oh, we'll come back to that. So, here's another one. This one here is 
plastic, so we have a steel shaft. This shaft itself would be anchored solid. We'll move the shaft, and the rollers themselves will spin on the shaft. Some of these, this one here has brass bushings in the end. The brass bushings are going to uh, wear, and so we would replace the brass bushings as they wear down. It's some kind of plastic, it's not just plastic, but some kind of plastic, and as it wears down eventually you would replace those. So if it wears into the shaft, then you have to replace the whole thing. <clears throat> These are cheaper than a bunch of steel. Steel's expensive compared to this, so cost-wise, this would be a cheaper option than this. What would be the disadvantage of this particular cutting unit? Roller. <laughs> well, the longevity of it, there's all not these lubricated ball bearings. Just being grass or brass fittings are going to build up more friction. It doesn't have even contact all the way along, so if you're going along the ground, if you come up to a, a little high spot or something, it's not going to lift it <coughs> up and over that. Um, it's just going to take it in. So if I was cutting really short, it would have a difficulty with an even height of cut because it's not contouring with the ground. And, well, if that's for the back, you wouldn't lay down the grass as good as the other. If you put it on the back, you wouldn't have striping. If you put it on the front, it only stands up. It's going to stand all of this grass down, all of this grass down, and then none of this. So you'd have weird striping, probably have an effect on it. So this wouldn't be something that you would use on a greens mower, where we want an even, beautiful quality of cut. So we might put this on some kind of. Jeez. Rough area, T-Mo, or someplace where we don't really care so much about the quality of the cut. We're not so picky about it. So you have to be careful about where you would choose to use this particular roller. And so, and it's going to wear, uh, it's going to wear out. You have to replace it. Because it's on brass bushings, it will last a little bit longer. There are styles like this where it's just plastic on steel and they're not going to last as long. So you got to look at longevity and cost-wise. Upfront cost is going to be less for this style of a roller. <clears throat> this one here, you can see that the end piece, it's a, it's a hollow tube, so this is just a metal tube, and then there's an aluminum piece that's machined, it's pressed in there, and then they kind of stake it so it stays in, and then you have your bearings and seals that go in the end. This particular one wore down, the aluminum piece got loose, came out, somebody tried to weld it, but they're welding aluminum to steel, didn't do quite the job that they should have, and so, first of all, we got these big bumps that are sticking up, so putting all these traction things in there, and it doesn't work so well. So, a better option would be here, you see there's a divot there, what we do is we take a center punch with a sharp point and we stake it. So you go down, stake it there, stake it there, stake it there. So you can see if someone went around this one and actually staked it, you're just pushing the steel down into the aluminum and that will help bite it. So you can go do that all the way around. That would be a better option than, than welding because trying to weld two dissimilar metals like that is not a very good option. So this one you'll see, there's a shaft, the shaft goes all the way through. We have some, there's actually a uh, roll pin that sticks through the middle here, and then there's some serrations. So when you put this one together, you press the bearing in, the bearing goes on the serration that keeps it anchored to the shaft. The roll pin is what stops the bearing. So if the roll pin gets wore off or snapped off, like this one's pretty low, then the bearing moves in and you start getting roller slop. So it's critical that this one has the roll pin and it's in place. Put the bearing up against it. And then you see a groove out here. That's where the seal goes. So this one will have a bearing and then a seal. And the seal rides on the shaft. And so the groove is created from the debris wearing and the rubber seal wears into the shaft. If the shaft gets worn like this one, the new seal doesn't have the right tension. When I go to grease it, the grease is just going to go past the seal and pour out on the ground. You notice that there's a hole in the end of this shaft and that there's a machined hole in the end here. So there's a fitting that goes in and a grease fitting's on the end. So you will grease this from the end, grease goes in, comes out the hole, hits the seal, 
If you put the seal in the wrong way, it needs to be a double lip seal so that it keeps water and debris out and it keeps the grease in. <clears throat> grease goes in, hits the seal, the seal tightens against the shaft, seals, forces it to go through the bearing, and then it will dump the old grease, water, dirt, whatever's there, it will dump it inside the tube. So over time, this will fill up with grease, water, dirt, dirt nasty, smelly stuff. It's really kind of gross. But it prevents it from getting on your golf green. <clears throat> so the idea is don't have to worry about wiping it off because when you grease, it just goes in here. If you're getting the habit of putting 10 pumps of grease in this every single day, you're going to fill this tube up pretty fast. <clears throat> so look at it, grease fitting comes in, comes out here, goes to the bearing. It shouldn't take more than one pump really to purge the bearing. So don't over grease it because you're going to end up with a mess. <clears throat> when you go to take a part, you tap on the end, the roll pin is actually going to drive the bearing and the seal out and then you stick it back the other way and you'll tap it the other way and you'll press this bearing and seal out this end and then you press them all back in again. <clears throat> so that's how you replace and repair this particular cutting unit. So it's got a shaft <clears throat> that goes all the way through. Roller. I keep saying something else. So this one here is the same way. This one you can see the seal that's in there. So there's the seal. There's a bearing right inside. The shaft has already came out. This particular cutting unit, I flip it around. You can see that this is really loose. Someone's tried to braise it in. Someone's tried to drill a hole and do some kind of staking. So it's tried several options and then it just got replaced. So one of the reasons that this will wear thin and do this is you're on a cutting unit, you're driving down a cart path and it swings. So when it swings, it strikes the ground. And if you're traveling down a cart path, we keep striking the ends and we wear the end thin. And that will damage this, both the aluminum piece and it thins out the end of your uh, tube, which is not very thick. And then this piece is bad. And then you gotta replace it. So, there's another one. This one here had some kind of scraper on it and the scraper rubbed here and this is all paper thin. And the aluminum is wore down pretty excessively. You can also see, you can also see the shaft. If you zoom in on there, you can see how the shaft is worn. This one, the bearing went out and they kept operating it. So instead of riding on a bearing, now I'm riding on the shaft. So there's a groove here where the bearing went out, the bearing was wearing, pretty soon the balls fell out, and then flunk, it was actually wearing here. I believe the story on this, this came from a, from a golf course. This is a greens mower. And it was a really small, low-end golf course that wasn't necessarily concerned about quality of cut. They just wanted to make long grass short. And they brought it in and said, hey, we need you to fix this. And I'm like, uh, you know, we're, we're so concerned with our, our meters or dial indicator acre gauge to set it at thousands. You know, you're, hey, you're off by two thousands, adjust that two thousands. And here we got a quarter of an inch of play. So these people are mowing their golf green with a quarter of an inch height of cut difference. And we're all concerned about a quarter of an inch. So sometimes, it's not that critical. Sometimes it's super critical. So it just depends on your course, how much people care, and how much a difference does it make. And so this one, it was obviously so bad, we couldn't salvage the shaft. We really damaged the aluminum in the inside, so the bearing didn't fit in there anymore. And it was so wore, we just had to replace the whole thing. So this is a case where you know, almost no budget, Whoever was operating it didn't pay attention when they were trying to grease. This one here, you can see the grease fitting is starting to get covered up because the aluminum piece was moving. Well, it couldn't grease it anyway, so they quit greasing it and then wiped out the bearing. So it's amazing some of the things that you'll find out there. So here's another smooth roller. So when I turn the shaft on this end, you'll notice that the other end 
is not turning. So what does that tell me about this roller? The shaft is not connected. The shaft is not a solid shaft. So this particular roller, which is a common Toro roller, has what we call water pump bearings. Water pump bearings is a shaft with two double rollers attached to the end of it and a seal. It's all one. So the seal, the two bearings, and the shaft are all one piece. And it presses in from each end. Again, we have a hollow tube. We take the bearings. We got to get rid of what's in there. So the common way of getting it out, you can take some tissue paper, hand paper towels, stuff them in there, take a rod. If you have a long rod, take the rod and just shove the rod through and do it above a box or something and just bloop, all that stuff comes out. And then you dispose of it pretty quick because it's just pretty stinky stuff. So that's one way of cleaning it out. If you try to take it to a steam cleaner and try to steam clean it out, it makes a heck of a mess on your steam cleaning pad. So you got all this grease that kind of melts out and then it solidifies and then it's all over your concrete. It's a mess. So I don't recommend that you steam clean it until you've pressed out as much as possible. Then you can go kind of do a final clean with a pressure washer or if you have a hot water washer or something that you can just run hot water, that works. The reality is if you leave a little bit in there, it doesn't matter. It's just a reservoir for junky grease anyway. So press most of it out put your bearings back in and on the road again. So if the rest of it's fine, that's all you gotta do. So water pump bearings. Mm -hmm. um, so would part of the reason for running water pump bearings in there be to allow for more space for excess grease? Is it really no, it just eliminates that big long shaft and some of the problems that you have. So a water pump bearing is a very simple bearing and it's very easy to repay, replace versus this other one where we showed you with the roll pin in it and now I'm tapping at this end if the roll pin snaps off then the shaft just comes out but I don't get the bearing seal out so it makes it kind of a pain if you've experienced a water pump bearing you'll find out they're really fast and simple and so here we have a tool this tool is made by r and products there are other people who make this tool and so this is to remove water pump bearings you can see we have a slot here we have a nut that's on the top and this piece goes up and down so we're going to rotate this this is a water pump bearing so i'm simply going to stick this on the end of it so what i'm doing is the piece in the middle is going to grab the bearing the piece on the outside is going to hold the roller so i'm going to be pushing against the roller and i'm going to be pulling on the bearing and i'm just going to pull the bearing right out so the fancy tool when you buy it comes with this pin which you're supposed to just stick through but in their wisdom the pin doesn't fit so you got to put something else in there so we just put in a quarter inch bolt. But I'm not lining up. Okay, so there it is. So we just put the bolt in. I don't have to put a nut on it. We're gonna grab those two wrenches. I'll let you guys do this real quick. You're gonna grab the big wrench that's gonna hold this outside, and then you're gonna turn on the nut. Actually, this one is actually so loose, I think I'm actually taking it out. So normally they're in there pretty tight, and you have to actually put a big wrench on here, and you put a, what we use is an air wrench. So I put an air wrench with a deep well socket and whoop, and just whoop, sucks it right out. And it makes that sound too. So, so for some reason this one was already loose. And then here's my water pump bearing. So you see here we have two roller bearings and a shaft that goes through. And it's got seals at both ends and it's pretty snug. You notice there's a groove in the middle. So the groove in the middle the works and likes fitting. should line up with my grease fitting. So when I grease it, the grease should go in this groove 
follows around the groove and should go in. This particular one doesn't have a hole there. It, uh, this one has a seal that faces in on this side and out on the other side. The grease fitting is here, grease goes in, purges out here. So when this one's greased, it's gonna purge out on the golf grain or you wipe it off with your rag. So this is a water pump bearing. So pretty simple. I mean, you just put that tool air in, whoop, take the next one. So I'm gonna take both of them out. When I'm done, I'm gonna take the new bearings, get one started, get the other one started. What I didn't find and I was looking for, I have a tool that looks like this except for it's thicker and it's about this long and that fits over here. You take two of them, set this on the floor, take a hammer and you tap on it and both of them press in at the same time. So we just use two and I have two of these metal slugs and all it is is just a, a thick, it'd be similar to this tool so it's a thick wall yeah. but the inside is just big enough to fit over this and the outside have to catch the outside brace. Touches the outside. So you just slip two of those on, put it on there. And you can make it, it's pretty easy to do. It's just some kind of thick bushing that fits over here. Set it on the floor, taps it in and you're done. So water pump bearings, they're about the easiest rollers to replace. And they're just, especially if you have that, this tool. So without the tool, it's a bit of a challenge. How do you pull that out without the tool? You need the tool. I mean, it's just the time that you would waste trying to do anything else. You need something. You either make the tool or buy the tool, but the tool makes your world a lot faster. So I have seen one other one. This one's pretty thick and stout. I had another one I looked at that was real thin walled and it looked like it actually was able to distort when you start using it a lot. And so this one is heavy. It's got a bearing on the top so it spins really easy. It's not going to wear out. So this is probably a lifetime tool right. if you buy one. So you just need a different pin. <laughs> Only problem that I've seen. So, so those are water pump bearings. This uh, roller here, you can see it's it's a uh, this this roller is only used every four years. So every leap year, you use this. So leap year, that special day of the year, you leap along. Okay, so <laughs> this particular roller is just an example of a spiral roller. This is one of the original ones where you can see the spiral doesn't go to the end. The new ones, does that one have spiral? Yes. So we rotate that one a little bit. Uh, the original ones, they came out with the spiral idea. The idea of a spiral roller is that actually, it, it actually s scrapes the ground a little bit and it actually stands the grass up. So it does a much better job of standing grass up versus a straight one. So the spiral roller has been a dramatic improvement. The problem with this roller is the ends weren't spirals. So this part of it would lay the grass down, this part would stand it up. So you have standing up and pushing down and it would leave these lines in your grass. So they ended up machining it. So the future ones, they went in and they actually took this piece and they machined it so the spirals continue down. So we have standing up process all along the roller. And so this was an improvement and this is the current style today. So everything else about it is still the same. The bearings and stuff are all the same. So inside of this, you can see we have a nut here. This is a nylock nut. Behind the nut, there are two washers, there's a spacer, and then there is a taper roller bearing. So there's two taper roller bearings that, that hold this thing. There's an inner seal, two uh, taper roller bearings, and then two outer seals. So it's a pretty heavy duty setup as far as uh, robustness of the seals and the bearings, and they last pretty good. How, this are, how are the taper roller bearings put in there? Are they done with the tapers? Uh, the high part of the tapers back to back? Or? You put your um, cups on the inside and the cones go the just like a wheel bearing. Okay. So this nut that you see here is what sets the preload. So you put it in, you adjust the two nuts, you want to bring them down evenly, so the same number of threads showing at both ends, and then you tighten those two nuts down and that's what gives me my rolling torque. And they should be preloaded when they come brand new and you set them on a table, 
if you just hold the shaft and try to roll it, it won't roll on a table. You have to put some pressure on it to give some grip. It actually turns pretty stiff when you get the appropriate torque. And it seems a little excessive, but once you put this heavy cutting unit on the ground, they tend to roll. So don't be surprised when you do one. You're like, man, that seems like a lot. It is a lot. But with the weight of the cutting unit, it actually is normal. So this particular one you can see is bent. That's what happens when a truck hits another truck at 60 miles an hour and comes to a sudden stop. And so <clears throat> this one was in an accident. Guy pulling a gooseneck trailer with a mower on it, rear ended a semi that was stopped and he hit it about 60 miles an hour. And the mower snapped loose, crashed against the front of the um, gooseneck trailer and this is the bar on the gooseneck trailer and that's how much it bent. That was all it did to the cutting unit was bend that thing. And it snapped the, cu the gooseneck off and the trailer hit the back of the pickup, the gooseneck hit the back of the cab and actually started caving the back of the cab in. I mean it crunched things and this when it snapped loose this is all it did to the cutting unit. So it's a pretty stout roller. <laughs> So that's the story on that. So it was in an accident and I wasn't involved. <laughs> Thank goodness, because that guy got hurt. So. so those are some differences in rollers and we can see these. So what I want to do now is we're going to actually look at the books that are laying here. So I want to have you move the camera over. We're going to kind of look over my shoulder and you guys can look at this from your side. So this book is old, this is from 2001. And so obviously the prices have changed. I would say the prices haven't changed monumental, but they have definitely changed. They've all gone up. So this metal has gone up. So, so just giving you an idea, this is a 2500 Greensmoor. We happen to have a 2500 Greensmoor. And you can see here we have five different options for rollers in this particular catalog. And down here we have prices. The prices range from $102 to this spiral roller, which is $322. That's Canada price. So let's go over here. So a US price, $68 up to $215. So, you know, sure, spiral rollers stand the grass up. That's a great idea. Let's just jump into spiral rollers. Well, 68 for a smooth roller, 215 for one spiral roller. And we need three of them for our greens mower out there. If it's a fairway mower, we need five of them. So you can see how the cost is, it's a big chunk of change to get that. So if we have this grooved roller, like this style, we have a problem with grass building up on our cutting units. They have scrapers that you can put on here that would kind of clean these grooves out. The problem is going to be as they start to wear, we'll also kind of wear on the scrapers and it kind of solves it. Obviously with a spiral roller, <coughs> I can't clean it out. But by the, by the very nature of a spiral roller, pine cones don't tend to stick into it and grass doesn't seem to build up as much. So we don't really need scrapers for spiral rollers, so if I pay the extra money, I'm also not buying scrapers. So you're, you're giving and taking in certain categories. So there, there's a difference in those. So you can see there's difference in prices. This spiral roller here, I want to show you the seals that are inside. Oops. So this is all the pieces that are inside of this large roller. So here we got our shaft. You'll see that there's a hole in the shaft. That's where the grease fitting comes out. So the grease fitting goes in the end. Grease goes in, comes out the hole. It comes out right near the bearing. We have a seal. Number six is a spacer and that's actually what the seal rubs on. So instead of wearing out my shaft, I'm wearing out this spacer. And I can replace just the spacer rather than the whole shaft <coughs> when the seal starts to wear in there. We got our cup and cone. Actually, that's the cup and cone. Sorry about that. Spacer. I don't know if I can look at the long one. Bearings 
22 ESPs, heavy duties. Maybe because this is an older one. The newer ones, there's actually a spacer in there that the seal rides on, and it helps extend the life of it so you're not wearing out the roller. This one just has an O-ring. The O-ring is sealing something inside. You have two seals on the outside, and then the nylock that's, that we showed you on the end. This particular green piece here, which is what we set our height of cut with, and when we look on the inside, there's actually a hex in there. And the hex fits over the nut. So when I put that on, I actually hold the nut from actually unscrewing. So the shaft goes through here, and we have an anchor bolt that holds the shaft from spinning. You'll notice on the end of the shaft that there is a flat spot. So here's the flat spot. The flat spot is what the anchor bolt goes against. The anchor bolt is only at one end. The other end doesn't have it. It has threads for an anchor bolt, but they don't put one. And what happens is the other end, because it's not anchored, starts to vibrate. When it starts to vibrate, we'll wear that green piece out. And so you can just take a grinder, grind a flat spot, and actually put an anchor bolt in and anchor both sides. And it will stop it from wearing out right. this, this green piece that's your height that cut adjuster. So. Because it's more loose space. Yeah. So when you grab your roller and you're checking for adjustment, you're like, oh, it moves up and down. Is it moving up and down on the shaft or is it moving up and down in this piece here? So that's one thing you would be careful about. But you can see it's pretty robust. There's a lot of stuff in there. And it's pretty healthy. <clears throat> so now I want to go to this. Ouch. R&R products. And... I just wanted to go through and show you a bunch of different things that you'll find in this catalog that's available. So this is like, you know, an aftermarket company that makes it, and you'll notice we have a lot of different colors of tabs here. They make accessories, aftermarket parts, parts and accessories for every brand of, of turf equipment. So they cover a lot of things. And then they make some of their own things. So here we have lapping compound, which is what we were using. You can see you can actually buy a pipe with a paintbrush on it. If you don't know how to go to your hardware store and buy one, they'll sell you one. It only costs you $15. <coughs> here's my lapping uh, machine. So here's a, one of those, $365. Gives you an idea of what one of those costs. So they're got a cost to them. Over here on this side, we talk about a, a bed knife facer. So we haven't talked about facing the bed knife yet, but we will. And so when we do, you'll have this image in your idea. This is just a four inch grinder with a special attachment on it that allows you to run along the front of the bed knife and actually face the bed knife. And so we'll explain that more in the yeah, later on. So hole cutter so you got cup cutters well cup cutters cutting into sand they wear they get dull and so they have cup cutters that you can stick them in and actually sharpen them to make cup cutting a lot easier mm -hmm. so there is a tool you can hand file them and you can do some other things you can use a regular four inch grinder and you can kind of grind them but they actually have a machine that sh cuts them so those are slick and then we have a rotary blade sharpener so I want to show you those tools. Going to here, this is my roller bearing. So this is a taper roller bearing. And this tool is what we see over here. So you want to hand me that tool. So this is a taper roller bearing puller. If we have the other style that has the long shaft and the bearing is still in there, you can get a taper roller bearing shaft. This particular tool, if we unscrew this, we have a rod that's in the middle. There's a ball bearing down here. And so when you thread this in, you take a wrench and you tighten the two together. This pushes against the ball bearing. This flares out. So you put this in past the bearing, past the seal, past the cup. If you've got the cup to pull out, thread this in with two wrenches and it would should spread out. So you can see here, spread it out. 
this one has been damaged, so it needs to be replaced. And the nice thing here, we have a kit from Snap-on, and Snap-on warranties it. When we damage this, we just give it back, they give us a new one. And we have damaged this a lot. It's a tool that you don't want to buy a cheap one of these. But it's just a bearing or seal puller. So, and you can pull bushings with it. So it goes in, flares out behind it, you put a uh, slide hammer on it, and chunk, 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 pull it out. So. This tool has saved us a lot of time and a lot of energy trying to get bearings out of some kind of area that's... Uh, now I'm not strong enough to undo what I did. So, anyway, uh, shine on the kit over there. So here we have a kit, and the kit actually covers all kinds of different sizes. There's only one spot within this kit that is not very well represented and it's one of those that we kind of need but you can see we have different pressers piece that goes in so this is for the smaller ones we also have a hook that we can put on a slide hammer we can reach in behind a seal or something and try to pull on it this one's been ground off at a taper so it's not very effective but this is for a slide hammer and then here we got a teeny little one so this kit originally came with three different sizes. So that's a rather indispensable tool. Saves you a lot of time and energy. When time is money and you've got a lot to do, I mean, there's a tool that will save itself. You could probably buy that. You could buy an OTC one. I don't know if our Harbor Freight fans have one, but they probably do. There are a couple of aftermarket ones that are not very good quality. The tool is going to break. The tool is going to get damaged. You can see here's a snap-on one and it's damaged. And by spending the money on a snap-on one, I don't know if Matco, Matco probably has one. Someone, one of those kinds of people where it can be replaced, it's worth the extra money because you're going to replace it. So you're going to break it. So invest in a good quality one of those. So unlike our our water pump bearing puller, this one, I mean, this one here, I don't think you would ever break. But this snap-on thing, you're going to break them. <clears throat> so here is a R and R Products bearing race puller. And they have different sizes. I don't see a price for a kit. So. Here's the water pump tool. Here's our water pump tool. And... This says 6195. That's a pretty cheap tool for what you're getting. So that is definitely worth the the $61. <laughs> so So again, different tools that are available to do your job. These are in, installation mandrels. So this would be like the pieces you stick on the two ends of the water pump and drive it in. So these are just tools that are available out there. I've never used this roller, rear roller, parallel gauge bar. So it looks to me like it's magnetic. You stick it on your mag on your uh, bed knife, and then you flip it up and see how it aligns. So it looks like a pretty fast tool, and that would take the place of our bench plate that we have. So we've been using these dial indicators. Um, accu gauges to set our height of cut. So here's two pages of different accu gauges that are there. These aren't called accu gauges because they're made by somebody else, but again, they're, you can get digital ones and you can get just manual ones. So there is a, I don't see it on there, but there's one from accu gauge that has a flat. Instead of just a little hook, instead of having the, the little screw on the top, they have a flat <coughs> plate and that would be for groomers. So groomers where you have knives there, they want a wider plate to kind of push up and they have ones that are used for groomers. So there are, there's a difference between height of cut gauges on a, on a reel and the one for a groomer. So you can see prices, $139, kind of gives you an idea, 120, 131 for English and metric. I don't know why I want to buy a metric one, but hey, some people do that. So hit digital, for $148, you can get a digital one. And then you can push the button and you can be metric one day and standard the other. 
So that gives you an idea of some of the costs and some of the tools that we're using. This is an idea that I've been looking at for years, having some kind of racking system that we can put our reels on. And I wasn't thinking of putting wheels on, but just instead of putting them on the floor or something, you can rack them. Right now we have a bunch of reels on pallets out here. Instead of putting them on pallets, we could put them on these racks, wheel them out there, wash them, bring them back in, wheel them up to our table, set them right on our table, and they're more condensed. And if you have extra sets of reels, which is common, you have your rock crushers or you have uh, your sand reels and then your standard reels, or maybe you have tournament reels. So you could have different kinds of reels. You might have groomers versus uh, reel mowers. And so these would be a storage unit. So you'd wheel them into your storage area. You're gonna put them on, you wheel them out. You take the groomers off, put the other ones on, wheel it back in your storage area. So that would be a real handy way of moving it around and storing them in a more condensed area. And you can make one of those yourself for easy. And you can make one of those. This one's $639. So you can buy a lot of metal for that. And do you have the time and do you have the budget? And do you have the welder? It's all things that you get to compare and weigh and decide what you're going to do. So I wanted to kind of go into the next couple of tabs here are different kinds of rollers. And so here is a Jacobson roller or Jacobson mower. And you can see here all the different options that they're providing for you. So we have smooth steel. We have polyurethane. We have a repairable steel. And that's the style that we talked about here with the washers and the spacers and this one doesn't have a spring in it but there's a anchor piece that you can do so and with that comes the scraper so we have a tooth scraper that would go in and clean it out because this one's going to plug up with pine cones and that kind of stuff the advantage of this one that's below here with the spring if we stick a pine cone in here or a heavy rock or something it'll actually push on the spring and it'll actually let it sit in there so that's a good thing and that's a bad thing it'll allow stuff to stick in there and you're gonna have to pick it back out so there's good and bad things so this next one is a groove polyurethane and this one is a solid piece of plastic that they machine the grooves into so this is going to be machined and it's all polyurethane the advantage of polyurethane is what doesn't wear out as fast. I don't know that it's not going to wear out as fast. It, uh, stronger one and it's not really going to be stronger. But plastic, we'll just call it plastic, it's really polyurethane. Plastic is going to be lighter, so we're going to have less weight on this machine that we're picking up. What else about polyurethane? Nothing sticks to it. What do you see on this one here? Rest. So how often is this one gonna rust? Never. Never. So metal ones tend to rust and then the debris sticks to the rust and then you have to go polish the rust off and then it kind of stops sticking a little bit. So a poly won't rust, big, big advantage there. Second thing is dirt and debris doesn't stick as well to plastic as it will to metal. And so they tend to be a little more self-cleaning. So there's some definite advantages there. Plus because this is solid, plastic, we can either A, just put it on the shaft, let it ride on the shaft. Polyurethane tends to be somewhat self-lubricating in some ways, and you can run it on metal and it wears really well, so you can get some pretty long life out of it without any bearings. And without a bearing means what? Less Less maintenance. Less maintenance. What maintenance are we talking about? Greasing. No greasing. So if I could eliminate greasing, which is a major issue here, no grease on my greens, and no maintenance, so I reduce my maintenance costs and no bearings to go out. So if I can get a solid piece of plastic that's riding on the shaft and I can get a consistent height of cut with no greasing, no maintenance, wow, I'm sold, you know. So more time out in the green. So you see a lot of people will go to that. When it does wear a little bit and you start to get a little bit of slop and we're trying to get things down to a thousandth of an inch, you know, four thousandths of wear starts to maybe get objectable. What do we do then? Replace. Well, we gotta buy a new roller because I don't just replace bearings, which are cheap. So you can see everything has good things and bad things. So you gotta weigh all of those. 
you know, maybe on a fairway, maybe on a rough area, it's not quite so critical if we have 10,000 difference in wear, you know, it's not going to be bad. So we'll wear it out before we have so much wear that we need to deal with it. So those are the kind of things as a technician, you're, you're playing with all these factors, cost, budget, you know, environments, all that kind of stuff. So down here, smooth tubular, smooth solid. So this is tubular, this is like this one we talked about that's just a tube. Smooth solid is a small, solid chunk of, of metal. It could be aluminum, it could be steel, and they machine it and there's a shaft that goes to the middle or maybe water pump. Heavy, so if I'm trying to keep my cutting unit on the ground rather than adding weights to it, I have rough ground, rough ground, I might want a heavy roller to help keep this thing on the ground. And that's where a solid would do. Solid would add weight and it, weight is going to keep it on the ground and that bouncing is going to be eliminated. Here's a smooth uh, polyurethane. So again this one here looks like solid chunks of plastic that are just riding on the shaft. Here's a groove solid steel and then down here is groove polyurethane. So we have lots of options and you can see this one has water pump style. These don't have any bearings, no bearings, no bearings, water pump. This one's got cup and cone style. It's got a seal on the inside, seal on the outside, and then this is a replaceable, 46 is a replaceable bushing that the seal rides on so I don't wear my shaft out. So this one's a rather complicated, more like this John Deere one that we see here. So this one, no bearings, this one, seals, cups, cones, bushings, a lot more parts involved. So you can see there's just a lot of differences. This one has um, oil on the inside. So this particular one here, you can actually take the plug out and they put a double lock grease, which is like between grease and 90 weight motor oil, or not motor oil, gear lube. So it's kind of in between. So it's a semi-fluid grease, kind of like corn head grease with the John Deere. It's a semi-fluid grease, and they call it a double lot grease. And it, you pour it, it's like molasses or honey. It, it'll run out. So these, you can fill them up with this oil, and then they run in oil all the time. So you don't re-grease them every day. You would fill them up when you rebuild it, but of course and that's it. the bearings it. or the seals go out on that, you're gonna have You're gonna have this semi-fluid grease that's gonna be starting to ooze out of it and cause problems. So I don't see them very much today. They were very common on the Blitzer or Toro pull gang mowers, where these were the rear rollers and they use that because they use the same double lock grease in the two gear cases on either end and then we also put gear grade, this double lock grease in the roller. So it was a common thing and we're going to mow mowing roughs, we're not mowing greens and fairways. So I'm just trying to give you a splattering of, of ideas. This was a John Deere. Here's our options for a John Deere product. This is a greens mower. So we have tubular, solid, polyurethane, repairable steel, it's got a water pump styles. So most of these are water pump styles. All of them are either water pump or no. This one has no bearings at all. And then we got this smooth. So here we're just showing you, and here they give you some options to help sell you. We've got some durable, no grease, no bearing styles. And then we got these that, that have bearings. So R and R ties to tie in other things they have for options. So this is uh, this cutting unit here. So there are ESP cutting units, and we can see we got all the different options again. So the similar straight roller, repairable, grooved. Individual pieces, comes apart, put pieces back in. Polyurethane, no bearings at all. We've got the smooth tubular, that's the style that's on the back of this cutting unit over here. And we have smooth polyurethane, polyethylene, that's a different one, polyethylene. I hope I've been saying the other ones right. Polyethylene, and that's no bearings, just rides on the shaft. There's another kind, and I don't I think I've seen it in here, where the, the polyethylene will be pressed onto the shaft, it's actually pretty snug, 
and then on the outside of the bearing, or the outside of the shaft, they'll put a bearing on the end. So it's out there, it's exposed, it's part of the bracketry that goes down on here, and so you just pull that bracket off, replace the bearing, stick them back on. So now I'm not getting the wear between the shaft and the roller, and the rollers last longer. But the, wa the bearings are just, you, know, you pull this piece off, and it's like a pillow block style. You rotate the bearing 90 degrees, the bearing comes out, slide a new one in, rotate it, and slide it back on. And they're fast, very similar to a water pump style. They're super fast to replace. No greasing, because they don't grease those and they're really easy. So they're pretty well sealed and then uh, they repair, replace them pretty easy. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. So this is that option where you have a solid polyethylene type uh, roller and then instead of the bearing being inside the roller, the bearing is inside the bracket. So we take the green bracket off here and we put this new one, still has little notches and everything's the same except for the end piece. The end piece now, instead of just being a hole for the shaft, it actually has the bearing. And the bearing would go in 90 degrees, you rotate it, and there it is. Time to change it, you take out your two bolts, the roller falls off, you would take the set screw out, slide it off, rotate it, rotate it, stick it back in, really fast to change bearings. So this is a Another one of those aftermarket, changing it from the OEM, it's available to a lot of different machines, a lot of different brands. So, and I find that pretty impressive. And most of the people that I've talked to that use them really like it, because it's fast. So, and it's a real common bearing. The bearing that they use is something you can get at local hardware or auto parts store, farm store, and so they're a real common, cheap, buy it by the roll, you know, and get a whole bunch of them, and they're, it's a real simple cost. So, so those are just some of the things I wanted to, that I flipped through here, I found. This book obviously has stuff for every company, every color, and they have all kinds of other parts. So it's main wear items that wear out pretty fast, and they sell kits. Uh, I'm curious about this lifetime. There's a thing here it says lifetime real uh, bed knife roller kits where I just seen it so they actually have whole entire cutting units that you can buy so it looks like it's green but if you look at our Toros over there does that look exactly like your Toro mm -hmm. So this looks like the Toro too, adjustable in the back. Got the single point adjustment. So here is lifetime reel and bed knife guarantee. So gotta go to page 15. Oh, I remember, I looked at that. And so that is, if there's any kind of manufactured defect, they'll warranty it. I thought maybe they give you a new one when it wears out, but they don't. So I don't know, I just can't believe that. So, is that your step meter? Step meter. Mm -hmm. yeah. And all that's just your oh, these are air fire. In there with tools, they do have step meters in here, and they have um, the prism gauge. They have those. So these are like individual pages that talk about their polyure polyethylene. Oh, polyurethane, polyethylene rollers. So simple, durable design, no grease, no bearings. So you have an internal steel, keeps the water out. The shaft is a stainless steel shaft, so the shaft's not gonna rust if it does get water in it. And this is a durable, low maintenance plastic roller sections. Well, not having rust means it's not gonna develop highs and lows with rust, which would cause excessive wear of polyethylene. So, and stainless steel is a super hard material, so it should wear really well, it should wear a long time. So, interesting design. This design over here, Minuteman Roller, that's the name of this. Here they're showing the bearings coming out, so you see how you rotate the bearing 90 degrees. There's actually a groove. So you can't just turn it any 90 degrees, you have to turn it 90 degrees with the groove, and then it comes out the groove, slide the new one in the groove, and it flips in. 
So when you get into pillow bearings in powertrains class, we talk about pillow bearings. So that's the style. So you slide it in, rotate it, and there it goes. So here they're saying, hey, the old style, you get debris packed in, and this is true. If you don't have some kind of scraper, they'll fill up, nothing make them pop out. And these, because of the taper design and the plastic or the polyethylene, they don't tend to plug up very well. So I don't need scrapers for this style. So if I had this one and was having problems with it plugging up, rather than going to scrapers, I would probably consider going to this. It would probably save you a lot of time. We talk about gang units. We talk about um, Jacobson Blitzers. This is like a Jacobson Blitzer style. And so in the old days, that's what we had was pull ground-driven units. So you see the big tall tires with traction on them. That's what actually drives the reel. And there's a big gearbox on each side. <clears throat> Lots of gears and bearings and seals and you rebuild it and it takes about a pint of double lot grease. So when you go to rebuild it, you take the cover off, you got a pint of double lot grease plus water and whatever else is in there on your table. And so we used to do these early on, we did them for probably the first seven, eight years of this program. We did these every year. The college had a set and then there was a couple of schools that had sets. <clears throat> and we would take them apart and man we would have grease everywhere and it's they're just heavy and they're nasty and so we were able to get rid of the colleges and the schools that we dealt with got rid of theirs and so we haven't had them for a while but that was what most people had before they came out with road now we're doing a lot of that with rot rotary mowers or just hydraulic driven stuff so we've eliminated them so if nothing else this kind of book gives you an idea of different options that are out there here you have brushes take the reel out put a brush in there and I can have a machine that goes across and brushes my green stands the grass up fluffs it kind of gets it to stand back up so we have different ideas that you can use for your uh, your golf course so some of these ideas are really good ideas, some are not. But this is <clears throat> similar to a John Deere, not a John Deere, but a Toro. Toro has a new cutting unit. They have a cutting unit, it's been out for a while, that you can drop out whatever's in the center. And here you can see we've got different kinds of um, verticutters, we got brushes, we have spikers, we have so different ways of aerating. <clears throat> and here it's just a roller. So we can mow our green, come back and roll the green. And so they're supposed to just be a quick change, replace the cassettes, four steps, no tools. So I was looking for a YouTube video <coughs> that showed Toros and how they did that. I couldn't find it. So if you guys find it and we can post it on one of those discussion boards, that would be great. So somewhere I was looking for a video of how this works to see how fast it's supposed to be. So, in the old days when we had all these gang mowers, you'd have these traction units that were kind of like a modified tractor, and then you have all these arms and all these cutting units would pick up and they're all kind of hanging up there. There's a lot of weight. They wing down and you could mow, or they just pulled, and if you come up to a tree, yeah, I tried to back up away from it. It was pretty hard to do. It couldn't go from one place to the other without mowing those places. So there's just a lot of disadvantages to them. So, and $1,500. So you can get one for $1,500. So, anyway. So, uh, that gives you an idea of kind of some of the options. There's a lot more options out there, a lot of pieces out there. What I want to do is let's go, we're going to try to unhook your battery and we're going to whip over real quick and look at some rollers on a cutting unit. And so in order to keep the film continuous, we're just going to roll over there. So let's go over there and look at a cutting unit. 
not going to do it? That's not going to work. Okay, so I guess that's not going to do it. Can you bring that cutting in on the table? The red one standing up that has the bad bearings? So what I want to show is how to check your rollers. So we're going to move some items out of here. Since our camera is doing some funny things, we're going to just deal with that in a different way. So when we check our rollers, every day you're going to be checking to see how your reel to bed knife is doing. Do I cut paper? You should also be checking your rollers. So I'm checking to see do I have end to end play. So the bearing of roller should not move end to end. And I want to spin my roller. And you can hear this one pretty well. Well, it should pick up on the thing. And you can hear that it's just rough. And if you can hear it, what you have is water has gotten into the bearings, the water pits the bearing out, and then when I roll it, it's falling into the pits and coming out. So the noise we hear is water pitting. And if I turn it real slow, and here I'm trying to use light pressure, you'll notice it kind of jerks. And what I'm doing is I'm falling into the pits. And so if you're checking to see if you have bad bearings, you just rotate. And if you can't rotate it real smooth, you have water pitting. So the number one reason why we lose bearings is water ingestion. We pressure wash this thing, you want to immediately grease it and push the water back out. And you'll be amazed at how much water comes out when you get done pressure washing it. Just pressure washing here, I can get it to push the ball in and inject water in here. So I got to push that water back out. So if you have an operation where they do a lot of pressure washing and they don't grease immediately, this will happen frequently. So, rear roller, again, same thing, it's noisy. This particular cutting unit here, it actually has play in it, you can feel it. Yep, so this one has up and down movement. You can see the striking that takes place. This is from the cutting unit bouncing on the cart path, so that's not good. End to end play is not really there. If we could move over a little bit with the camera, you'll notice this one here has a snap ring. It's a little bit hard to see, but the, this little black piece is actually a snap ring. So instead of having a roll pin on the inside, this one has a snap ring. So when you take the roller off, you will remove the snap ring, and then when I drive it, it'll actually push it out. There's a bearing inside of there. So as long as it's just the bearing and not the shaft or the roller, we can just take the snap ring, pull the bearing out, press the new bearing in, put the snap ring back in. So this is a slightly different style. The shaft will go all the way through. So it's not a water pump style. This is water pump. This is a through shaft with, with a bearing on the end. So it's pretty easy to check your rollers. Just grab them and check them. And if you hear them, you got problems. So this one over here, we don't, we don't hear anything. When I go to ro rotate it, it rotates nice and smooth. There's no water pitting, no roughness there. Rear roller. You notice here when I try to spin it, it doesn't just spin. These just spun. This one here doesn't spin. It takes a bit of resistance. I mean, this one's got less resistance than this one. This is more what you see in the factory setup. This one feels to me like it's a little bit on the loose side. So this is more like what it should feel like. I want to make sure I don't have any end to end and no up and down movement. If I do, I check first to see if it's my shaft. Is my shaft moving within the housing? If the shaft's not moving and the roller's moving, then I got a bearing problem. One of the things that we've experienced here is this green piece I told you has a hex, uh, hex nut on it and it goes over the nut. Sometimes the students will put the nuts on too far to one end 
and one hex nut doesn't actually go inside the green piece and then as you're rolling along the bearing will of the nut will actually back off so I've had it to where they're loose and you just take this off tighten the nut back up and then put it on to where the nut it needs to be held by this green piece if the green piece is not holding it then in the process of rolling along it can unthread itself so we've had that happen a couple of times here so you just take this off tighten it back up and then try to figure out how to secure it better so those are real simple easy daily maintenance thing you should be checking this I should be checking my reel this one here is all rusty and so I would check to see if my my reel has movement end to end does my move radial movement turn my reel same way if I turn it real slow does it turn nice and smooth or does it go clunk 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 and if it feels like this one over here, then my reel bearings are bad. I can't backlap or grind a cutting unit with bad reel bearings. It's going to chatter and it's going to be bad. So before I can do any kind of grinding process, we have to do what we've already been doing. Check for sharpness, check our bed knife, check our rollers, check the bearings. You would replace all those, get those up to par, make sure our in play and everything is, our preload is correct. And with it correct, then we would proceed to grinding or backlapping. So, so in a normal golf course, winter time, you check, oh, my bearings are bad. Typically, you're not going to have just one bad bearing. Uh, we have five of these cutting units. All of them have some sort of noise. So you would do, in the winter, you'd replace all the bearings. I want to go into spring when grass is growing really hard, and I want everything to be as good as possible because I'm going to be done with a lot of fires besides, you know, bad bearings. Bad bearings. And so I want to get two or three, four months without any bearing problems. And if you don't use a high pressure washer, then you actually can get through most of the year without bearing problems. Most of the people that I talk to that have bearing problems also use high pressure washers every day. And that's going to give you bearing problems. So it's going to be really difficult to educate your crew on how to use a pressure washer. And so you end up replacing a lot of bearings. So those are the kind of people that finally go to the Minutemen bearings so they can replace them. But instead of using, why am I losing bearings, they try to come up with new style rollers. So it's kind of a combination. You need to kind of think about where my failure what is failing and why? What's creating this failure? Either I'm not greasing it after I wash it, or I'm using, you can't really say that I'm using inferior bearings and seals because most of our bearings and seals are made in China today. It's really your maintenance practice. Lack of grease, wrong kind of grease, and water ingestion from some way. And then we're not pushing the water back out. So you want to deal with those. The other thing about the water pump bearings, some of these water pump bearings don't have the hole. So I shoved a bolt through the hole and took it out. Some of them come without the hole. Those you just take to a drill press. You grind a little flat spot so the drill can start. You just drill a quarter inch hole and then you just pull them out. So they don't all come with that hole. So you just create the hole. Any other questions or observations? Well, the only one I have is about the, if you go to drill holes in these, won't mm -hmm. that weaken the... You're throwing it away. So it's got a bad bearing. In order to use my tool, I need to pull the bearing. So I'm going to drill it, and I'm throwing the bearing away. So it doesn't matter if I weaken it. Because... It comes as a unit. It's a part that's come also it comes as a yeah. unit. So you just drill a hole. And so you drill a hole, you pull it out, and you throw it away. So this one comes from the factory with a hole in it. Well, the reason why is I there's a scraper that you... Uh, there's a piece that comes out here 90 degrees. So you put a nut on both sides, and then it goes across here, and it's, that's what holds the scraper. And so they they clamp that on there. And then you can adjust the scraper or the brush. Sometimes there's a brush. And you tighten one knot or loosen the one, and it kind of sets the depth or how aggressive the scraper or the brush is. And that's where it attaches. It's through that hole. 
So that's why a lot of them have the hole. Some other ones have the hole just so we can remove them. So it's the two one, purposes of the hole. The one problem those ones away anyway, except for the ones that are yep. the solid shaft. Correct. One problem though with drilling a hole in this is you can never grease this bearing with a greaser in the end. Yeah, and that one's not going to be greased on the end. This one's designed to grease in the roller itself. Right. The hole in the end, the thread here on the end on this one, so this water pump bearing, there's the threads on the end. The purpose of the threads on their end is on a greens mower, we're going to have a piece that comes out with a ball on it, and that's what we attach. There's a big roller that the basket sits on, okay. and we actually clip onto that, and that's how we pull the cutting in along. And so that is for the piece that has the ball that we it clip onto. A, a line that runs down to the end of it, down in there, and it goes right to the middle of that drill pole. It does go down and I don't almost to hole. it, but that's not the purpose. This is not for a grease fitting. So it's, that's kind of confusing because we had another roller that we did have the grease fitting in the end. So, mm, this one. So this one, the grease fitting is not in the roller, it's here. It goes in and it comes out here. So this one is in the end. This one is in the end, but it's in the roller itself. This one here is straight in and the grease fitting is going to be behind, purges it out. So you can see there's all kinds of different ways of greasing and you have to understand where does grease come in and where does grease come out. And you want to make sure that you understand that before you put seals in. So the biggest thing is when I put a seal in, do I put the seal in with the lip facing the grease or away from it? And most of the time you want the lip to allow grease. Somewhere it has to purge. The grease has got to go in, you want it to go through the bearing and go out. So if the grease fitting is on the outside, it's going to go through the bearing and purge inside the roller. If the grease fitting is on the other side, it's going to come through the bearing and purge out on the ground. So you have to understand so that. This one would purge out on the ground. This one here, this one here is going to purge out on the ground. So the grease fitting is on the back side, it goes through the bearing and it purges out. Okay. You would wipe it off and go out. So as a technician, that's an added step before we go mow. Okay? That is a big step in rollers. And we'll continue our discussion with other topics. Thank you.